I figured we'd we're do recording that right around the time that 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 they were there. Okay. So apologies for not recording from the very beginning of the meeting. So I'll call this meeting to order. It's a, a special select board well, meeting for uh, interviewing two candidates for the interim town administrator position. It's April 7th, uh, 6-13, and we're expecting our first candidate at any moment. Uh, first, we're going to have an interview with Carter Terenzini, and then we'll have an interview with Ross Perry. Those are our, our do, do we have any public comments? Ms. Carter. I don't think so. That's, hello, Carter. Good evening. How are you folks? Hi, Carter. Good evening. I, I think hopefully we'll all come through. We seem to hear each other anyway when we were just gabbing away. <laughs> well, I, I heard none of it. <clears throat> no, that's okay. Uh, but then Tom told us you'd just be appearing magically. Uh, I, I trust you're not where your background says you are. Um, if only. That is the western side of Lake Champlain. Some folks <laughs> confuse it with Winnipesaukee, but yeah, I'm a Vermonter by heart. So what can I say? <laughs> It's beautiful. I think we're all just in our regular old houses. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I am as well. This is just the magic of technology that protects me from you seeing the mess in the kitchen behind me or wherever else I'm sitting at the moment. That's why I'm not in the kitchen. <laughs> so this is, our, this is the board. Uh, I'm Bob Armstrong and Phil Cantor and Erica Goldman. And uh, I suspect you've talked to Tom, our, our current town administrator. Uh, yes, uh, during the uh, preliminary interview, and we've had a few email exchanges just for scheduling uh, and the like. Great. So, so. We've enjoyed having Tom as our town administrator. Hate to see him go. And he's off to a, a bigger pasture and, and uh, new, new challenges. Dalton's, uh, I lived in the Berkshires for about 30 plus years, and Dalton's a great little community. And uh, he's following uh, Kenny Walto, who actually followed me at one point as community development director in uh, uh, in Pittsfield. So I think he'll enjoy the Berkshires uh, very much. So we're not, I mean, I don't want to say we're not terribly formal, but we're not terribly formal. Um, <laughs> Do you want to start off just by telling us about yourself? And, so and, 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 and we have about 45 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I will uh, uh, try to do my best to keep some good, good time of the track, uh, track of the time here. Uh, so um, uh, I started in local government in Pittsfield uh, as an aide to the mayor and uh, became their first commissioner of community and economic development in a new uh, structure that they've actually codified through special legislation. Uh, went to work for the state uh, Department of Environmental Management at the time, now DCR, uh, traveled uh, the northern tier uh, across uh, North Adams over to Gardner and down and Shelburne Falls and uh, that region uh, substantially over a six year period. Um, and then uh, I went into business for myself uh, some somebody said to me last night, some ideas when you think of them seem good, then they turn out they weren't. Well, this was this was amongst those ideas uh, mm -hmm. caught in the 91-92 uh, um, real estate collapse that was spread across Massachusetts. Uh, so I returned uh, to general government um, as the 11th manager in Castleton in 11 years. Uh, I lasted uh, 18 months, uh, which outdid, um, I think, nine of my predecessors. Um, uh, and then over time, uh, returned to Massachusetts as the first town administrator in Spencer. Uh, they had just gotten their uh, police back from the state police. They were under uh, state supervision at the time. Um, and uh, had a pretty good run there, about nine years or so. I uh, came up here to Moultonboro, where I, I think I had a pretty successful run, uh, and then retired. Um, it took me about uh, four months to become horribly bored. Uh, and I had an opportunity to go down to New Durham as an interim, uh, working three days a week, four days a week. Um, uh, and then down to Templeton, where four months turned into four 
years and four months as we work them out of state oversight and develop a succession plan to uh, retain a town administrator that they could uh, could afford and had a reasonable set of skill sets. Uh, and then over to Grafton, I enjoy these interims very much. Um, I find them um, really enlightening, learning uh, how new communities do things um, and helping keep the boat uh, on, uh, on path as it departs uh, from uh, one captain. I'm uh, sort of, if you will, the the pilot of the ship just to get it from one side where where Tom uh, gets off in port and goes on to his new uh, new posting uh, until we get you across to, into the uh, port on the opposite side where you'll bring a new captain on board. Um, I'm pretty available uh, and even if I'm not physically there, uh, emails, phone calls, I think if you talked with any of the folks I work with, you would find that I probably put in substantially more time than they had anticipated. Uh, and I would enjoy a chance to come back out to the Franklin County and the hills uh, there uh, headed towards the Berkshires and perhaps uh, be of some assistance to you folks for a few months as you bring your new captain on board. Phil, do you want to go first? Well, sure. Um, so Carter, I'm, I'm Phil Canner. I'm one of the select board members mm -hmm. and um, also elected to the Conway School Committee and the Frontier Regional School Committee. Okay. Um, so, which is because the school is two thirds of our budget in Conway. So if we don't have an insight into budget formation when it's happening, we have no input into it whatsoever. So um, so I do have a couple of uh, uh, questions. I guess you answered, uh, you answered pretty much a lot, but uh, so describe to us what you think of the, the role or the function of an interim town administrator is um sure and i guess uh, I mean, you know it, what, what your goals would be with that position too. yeah i mean i i i consider it a short-term position that really uh should be there to um keep the ship on course uh you have projects laid out um uh, that you want to make sure don't drop by the wayside i'm not sure i'm pronouncing it correctly uh, but I know you got a substantial FEMA grant on um, Del Bar Avenue. Del Bar, yeah. Del Bar. Sorry about that. Um, you know, so to make sure that projects like that, uh, CARES money that might be in the pipeline, especially if you have a deficit uh, in those CARES account, uh, to make sure that nothing gets dropped uh, along the way and that you stay on on target. Uh, I I didn't see anything about the town meeting getting deferred. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that that remains on track for your, your second May, uh, second Monday here in May. Uh, uh, it got deferred. It got deferred. Uh, <laughs> oh, it did. It did. I'm sorry. Yes, I just didn't yes. see it online. Uh, so it's, it's the first Saturday in June. Oh, okay. Saturday, so Saturday at one o'clock, um, I guess that's June. Uh, okay. Uh, but in any event, to make sure that events, uh, you know, such as that are on track, we're getting the information out to the people. Uh, we're making sure council's been involved all along. Uh, to, um, so those are the major projects. Then there's the day-to-day -day events. Uh, and then there's the pop-ups. Uh, I know that Tom has already briefed you uh, on the, uh, the COVID monies, the 550,000 uh, bucks, what they might be uh, uh, able to be expended on uh, and uh, making sure that nothing is, is dropped there. Um, you know, you don't have sewer, you don't have water, but there are things that you need to start to think about. Uh, do you want to think about getting a term uh, engineer on board? What does broadband mean in your community? Uh, we went through a substantial effort up here in Moultonboro to expand it, uh, which has proven critically important um, as uh, so many school districts um, uh, turn to, uh, uh, you know, remote uh, learning. I'm not sure where Frontier is, and then I know District 38 manages your elementary schools, if I if I understand correctly. Um, so it's a shared superintendency union. Okay. So we, each town has their own elementary school right, school right. district, and then we are shared central office superintendency yep. union. What we call Vermont supervisory unions. Um, right in uh, New Hampshire right. Consolidated Unions. So there's the projects that are ongoing, there's the pop-up projects, then there's the day-to-day -day administration 
uh, to make sure that uh, things don't get dropped. Uh, finally, to be keeping good track of where all the projects are uh, so that I can develop a good um, status memorandum uh, to turn over to the, uh, the new captain of the ship, the incoming town administrator. Uh, I did that in Grafton and I think it was a uh, little larger town, a few more projects and issues. So it ran about five or six pages and then um, afterwards exchanged a few emails with uh, Evan and a few calls. Uh, but he was able to pick everything right up and, and run with it based upon the, the memorandum that we prepared. So we have uh, ongoing projects, new pop-up items, daily administration, and um, uh, being ready to do a good turnover memorandum as my responsibilities. So, and so would would um would would you also sort of uh, take an approach to, to that to, to that role as sort of um uh, I don't know looking at all of what our town does in terms of best practices from your previous experience and and just uh, not necessarily recommending changes but saying you know hey there's alternatives or what, what sure sure um, I mean you got a pretty good uh, TA right now Dalton's, yeah. uh, yep. Dalton's yep. no slouch. Uh, yeah. in terms of looking at things. But if I were to see something based upon uh, a broader experience, um, I've got a few more years in the municipal management field, uh, and I've uh, managed either on a longer term basis or an interim basis um, of additional communities um, and had more experience with the state uh, Department of Revenue. They just completed a very positive review of what we're able to do for Templeton's finances. Absolutely, I would share those with you as things that you should think about uh, doing and why you should think about doing them um, and uh, perhaps uh, identifying some resources that could help you with that review. Uh, that is generally part of that um, transition memorandum that I turn over uh, to the incoming TA, uh, but we could certainly back brief the board as well. I guess, um, could, could you talk about, I guess, sort of the, what your worst job experience ever was and what your best job experience ever was? Well, my worst job experience, uh, quite frankly, was in Castleton, Massachusetts. My family has a camp there for a number of years. My family's, um, my uncle was a, a Olympic tryout skier. My cousin is the state senator. My other cousin is the state representative. My family's uh, pretty large in that general area. And I really wanted to go to Castleton and uh, we hassled back and forth. And the day I got there, they'd actually change the contract. Um, and what I should have said is, well, it's pretty clear the way you guys play. And instead I said, nah, I'll stick around and I'll show them how good I am. And they'll love me. Um, I did last 18 months, which the newspaper thought was a pretty good, pretty good run. Um, uh, in that 11 years, three of us did six of them. Eight of them did five years. Uh, so that was a pretty tough experience. And it was also a very deeply personal experience because my wife and I had, had moved. We had a small farm. Um, uh, she was a, a teacher uh, in West Rutland. So, and, and, you know, we ended up moving back to Mass. So that was a very deep professional loss and a very um, personal loss. My great best experience, I think really is, is, uh, is Spencer. You know, when I went in, they had virtually no money in the checkbook. The state police had just left. Um, their police department had completely collapsed. The state police had been in there for uh, eight months almost. They'd only been out of town for about eight months. They were uh, close to what many people thought was going to be bankruptcy and state oversight. Um, I was the first town administrator under special act of the legislature. We had 50 some independent boards, commissions, agencies that all acted very independently. Uh, at the time I left, um, I made a very positive uh, reputation with the state. Uh, the finances had been mended. Uh, reserves had gone from you know roughly $2,500 in reserve uh, to collectively across the several reserves, uh, about $2 million. We had a great budgeting process. Uh, and they withstood the uh, 2008 recession without any dramatic cuts. Um, and everything that we put in place 
uh, the reorganizations, they remain in place today, 13 years later. Uh, the town has not undone any of those administrative changes where we went from 50 some independent boards, commissions and agencies to basically six teams um, with a uh, group leader or department head. So we have the department of op, we have the office of development and inspectional services. I know that in a small town such as yours, I see you uh, collaborate with the uh, council of governments in your, your area. Uh, and in accounting, I got to say kudos because finding accounting people is very difficult. And the smaller you are and the further west you are, uh, the more difficult it becomes. And you're building inspection uh, over there with council of government and some others. Uh, so I would say Castleton by far the worst, uh, Spencer by far the most satisfying. Uh, let me just uh, jump in here to say uh, we probably have about eight more questions in about half an hour. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Erica, do you want to go? Well, I mean, I, I met Carter um, on our preliminary interview, so I um, have already spoken with him. <laughs> I, yeah. I feel like I know a lot. Um, but I, 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 I feel like I can you, I, particularly because this is this is an interim position, can you talk about your um, how you would approach working with town staff um, and developing a relationship in knowing that it's a, you know, it's, it's a short period of time, but these are important people that you need to work with. Sure. Uh, so first I acknowledge that I'm a caretaker, but a caretaker who cares, if you will. Um, I try to meet with uh, each of them individually. Um, I ask them for a quick brief on what's going on in their departments and any items of import that may have been Tom's plate uh, that he simply didn't get a chance to, to follow through our, our in front of the, um, the board that perhaps they didn't get a, a chance to follow through on. I noticed that there'd been some discussion earlier about uh, uh, maybe getting bids on property, workers comp and the like. Where does the board stand on that? Because these things can be, have a long lead time. Um, I make sure that the department heads understand uh, that I'm there to be supportive uh, and that I'm there to take the bullets, that that's my job, uh, and uh, to ask them what they need from me. What can I do to be supportive? Um, and uh, I make sure they each have my uh, mobile number, uh, my direct email, um, whether we set something up on the town line, uh, you know, so I can access everything there. Um, and I try to just, uh, you know, comfort them that I'm not gonna turn the world upside down. Uh, I know I did do a couple of things in Grafton because of the situation that they were in. Um, and we started a weekly report, which has been continued. Uh, and I consult with the staff as to what makes some sense. Um, here's the issue. What do you think? What's going on? The other thing is I try to work with, uh, you know, let's say something's going to impact uh, police. Does it also impact fire? Does it also impact emergency management? Uh, to help them understand that we work uh, as a team collaboratively, as I know you do. Uh, so it's about making sure they understand I'm a caretaker who cares, um, that I need to know what's going on, uh, asking them what I can do to be uh, of assistance to them um, and making sure they know that uh, while I might be getting paid for whatever it is, I am full-time 24 um, seven, uh, unless perhaps I'm with my partner for 24 hours and she has a pretty much a don't you dare answer that phone rule when we see each other twice a month um, when she, cause she's in New York city. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's what I do my best to, and I think you'd find that most department heads uh, would agree that uh, it was a good working relationship. Thank you. Okay. Do you want me to go, Erica? Are you good? Or are we can yeah, no, I'm good. For more? I, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I know you've already I, gotten I, to I, ask I, a I lot. Carter already. <laughs> I think he's yeah. answered so many of these questions for me. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, so. One of the issues that that is huge here in Conway, and I'm sure in every town, is that the, the many of the town employees report to Tom, and and they'll be reporting to you. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm wondering, could you talk about some of the difficult employee issues that you've had and how you resolved them? Things that came up. 
Well, um, let me just say that uh, I kind of warn all department heads ahead of time that when I ask you a question, please don't say, well, we've always done it that way. If you want to say, we've always done it that way because, and help me understand why, perfect, great, awesome. Um, when you come to me with an issue, please be prepared to, um, A, uh, propose some potential solutions. And please don't um, be afraid if I ask you some questions. I may have a slightly broader experience, either from another geographic region, from a larger uh, session, or because I have a wider background, having worked um, for the state uh, in economic development activities. Um, uh, and I read <laughs> everything I can lay my hands on. Um, so I've generally done fairly well with uh, all of those kinds of department heads. I have never done horribly well with uh, some department heads who take the attitude, especially elected ones of, you're not the boss of me, you can't tell me anything. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not the boss of you, but certainly I'm there to work with you, get you answers, get your documents through. And if I say, maybe you should rewrite this or structure that a little bit differently, maybe you ought to take advantage of my, um, my knowledge and my experience. Uh, the other department heads that uh, I don't necessarily do well with are those who don't feel a need to collaborate or understand. So when a town clerk walks into the accounting office in one town and says, oh, by the way, starting next week, I'm doing X, Y, and Z, and both my, the accountant and my chins just sort of bounce off the desk of, excuse me, uh, you, you, you can't do that. That's got all these different kinds of problems uh, simply because they had not collaborated with the treasure collector, with the accountant, uh, with the uh, town administrator. We hadn't had a chance to bounce it off the auditor to make sure we were creating a solid audit trail. Uh, and so that department head was very upset when we kind of vetoed it for about four weeks while we could step back, make sure we included everybody and do everything. So for those department heads who uh, have solutions, understand you need to understand the basis of things, um, enjoy an opportunity to discuss options. My kids call me option man. Um, I'll do very well. Uh, for those folks who don't think they work for anybody and who don't feel they need to be part of a team, um, I will be honest with you and tell you, I, I won't do well with those kinds of folks. And I don't know if you have any of them. Uh, I'd love I, to tell you we have none of those kinds of folks. Well, um, I, I would love to hear that. <laughs> uh, but certainly, you know, we all have different learning styles. We all have different work styles. And I try to adjust to each uh, individual. Um, that's one of the things that my wife, the special education teacher, kind of finally got through my head. We have a strictly grizzled veteran department head system where just everybody in there has been there. You know, our fire chief, 42 years, police chief, 40 years. Well, there's something um, to be said for longevity as well. Yeah, I mean, everybody's been there for a long time. And you're in, the, you're in, a, you're in an office building where you can actually... Collaboration, collaboration. Heck, you hear what each other says on the telephone all the time. Even. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Conway is smaller than any of the towns that I see on your list. Although I don't know. How um, uh, Con was. Conway, uh, Templeton, uh, Conway will be the smallest, around two thousand folks. Uh, that said, I lived in Pulteney, Vermont. Uh, it's about the same size. Understood town government. Went to the town meetings. Um, it will be the uh, on the smaller side, um, close to the size of a town that I grew up in. Uh, I grew up in, uh, to some degree, in, in Virgins, Vermont, which is around 2,400 people at the time. I, I don't think we're going to be presenting you with the problems that looks like you walked into in some of your former towns. Where... Um, I do not believe that you will at all. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm looking forward to that opportunity. <laughs> Uh, you, you've you you've we've never you know uh, for all of us collectively anywhere we've never done this before you, you know hiring an interim and then and then searching for a permanent how long do you think that'll take or or how in the ones that you've seen 
Well, um, you, you've started the search for your permanent and I don't know where you are on that process. Um, so let me, let me assume for a moment you had not started your process, okay? Uh, in general, that is six plus or minus months, uh, depending upon, that's assuming that the person you hired is already employed in the field and has a contract and um, has a, you know, 60 day, 30 to 60 day exit clause in theirs. Um, you may be hiring uh, someone who's gonna be entering the professional management field and uh, is in a position where they can give a standard two week uh, notice as opposed to 30 or 60 days. Um, I don't know what, what you had in Tom's contract, um, but, uh, and, and I don't know the status of the applications that you've taken. Um, but, uh, you know, four to six months. Um, and these are difficult, increasingly difficult positions uh, to fill. Um, that's the best advice I can give you. So, so to that end, like, would you have um, any special conditions you would want before you would accept an appointment? So to duties, limits of authority? Well, I would contract. certainly want to understand the range of the authority so that I don't step on a landmine and do something that's not mine. Um, or not do something that is mine to do. Um, I'd like to have a bit of an understanding of how long you think this would be. Um, and of course, we would want to talk about how many hours you want. And, you know, some of them certainly need to be physically present. But in today's age, uh, some of them can be um, a virtual, as we're doing now, uh, and emails. Um, I spent uh, in Templeton uh, generally two or three days a week there. Uh, that was a larger community. Um, and then I did the balance. And as I said, it's, it's essentially 24 seven for me. Uh, so um, I, would, I would just, if you think you'd like to have me work for you, um, we would just need to have a conversation about where the guardrails are. I'm pretty much open, I'm, I'm retired. I get to pick my schedule. One of the things about interims that really works nicely for me is um, if I have something to do on Monday and Tuesday, maybe I'm working Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, if I have something to do on Thursday and Friday, maybe I'm working Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and I'm doing a board meeting, you know, Zoom today. Uh, so as long as we understand where the guardrails are, um, I think we could uh, um, work out something that could meet your needs uh, and meet mine as well. Do you have any questions of us? Um, I, I guess uh, the only question I have for the moment is, uh, goes back to the recruitment. Um, do you have a sense of, um, of how long you think this might be? I know that you started your recruitment on the permanent. Um, that time frame that you just mentioned sounds ballparkish. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're, um, we're slightly shorter, slightly quicker. You, you know, our fiscal year ends July 1st and we start a new fiscal year July 1st. And then, so we need to get through town meeting. We need to get through the fiscal year and then we need to bring someone on board and we would like that person to overlap with you, you know. Sure, sure. And I've, I've done that fairly well in each of the communities without it being too much. Templeton actually kept me on retainer for a year to mentor the fellow that we brought along um, and to provide oversight. In New Durham, um, I was able basically to do it with a drafting memorandum um, and the same in, in Grafton. I, I will say that uh, with Tom having the, the warrant buttoned up and the budget uh, buttoned up as well, I'm kind of looking forward to that. I had to uh, do it on the fly on my way out the door in Grafton. Uh, and I had to do the same thing in New Durham. You know, I'd been there like two months and they said, okay, it's time to do the budget and you have 45 days. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, being on the back side of the turnover is, um, uh, I think it's a, a good situation for you to be in. Town meeting is always an exciting time for us. So, you, you know, having, having the budget all set, settled is one thing, but getting it all passed. We're, well, we're, I've, we're, um, I've seen them, you know, have the, uh, the, uh, the weightiness of a Senate debate um, or the um, frivolity of a Jerry Springer show. So, uh, you know, I look forward to the opportunity to hopefully be with you folks uh, at your town meeting when you present your, your warrant and your budget. 
we're famous in our in our amongst our neighboring towns for being for having sort of the highest percentage of voters that attend town meeting and also for just being the most polite you know our, our school superintendent that's got to go to all of our, all the towns in the district always says we're the only one where no f-bombs are dropped and it's he always looks forward to coming to ours you know, uh, and, and, and actually, that's, that is a, a, a subject I would want to talk with you if you were to retain me. I know in Templeton, we were one of the fewer towns that turned some of our CARES money over to the school district. Um, we were able to transmit a couple hundred thousand uh, to them to help meet their needs. Um, and um, our partner town actually wouldn't do it. Uh, you know, so that seems to be to have a different view across the state. <laughs> And um, of that 550 uh, in uh, any CARES money, that, that's a conversation I would probably want to have with you early on, uh, should you bring me on board. Just to answer your, briefly answer your curiosity, they got their own out of this last CARES. Did they in this last yeah, round? Yeah, the, okay. the earlier stuff we were sharing, we'll share, we share, we, we're, we're, town government has a wonderful cooperative relationship with the schools. Excellent. And, uh, and all the towns do, then that's, we actually are also famous for never, ha never having said no to a school budget in our 255 years or 260 years. I am infamous for generally saying no to every school budget. <laughs> um, my, wife, my wife is a special education administrator. My former wife, I should say, uh, is a special education administrator um, who thought all town managers were cheapskates. And I was a town manager who thought all school departments or vacuums on general government. So um, you can imagine the conversations at dinner time. Uh, we get along better than that. Well, that's good to hear. And I can give Phil some of that credit, but, but, but in general, our schools work very hard to keep their budget as low as they can. And, and, uh, and the town is very supportive of, especially I'll say the elementary school, we're all proud of our elementary schools and having really an excellent elementary school. Uh, is there anything else I can share with you all tonight? No. Yeah, Very good. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, my best wishes to you for uh, selecting the right fit for your community, uh, because it's uh, many of us have the same skill sets. Uh, and it's really fit that's important, both in your, your interim and then in your permanent. That's, that's the true uh, measure of success. Thank you. Take care, folks. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Thank nice you. See, nice to nice meet you. See you again, Erica. Oh, he's adorable. I know, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he'd be totally fine. He would be totally fine. Says says uh, views schools as uh, money money vacuums and. Oh, he was no. joking. Was yeah, that, that a joke? Was humorous. You think? Yeah, you got to be able to realize that, that was humorous. Education edu I mean, like, yeah, he, it, that was a joke of his yeah. wife, his special education, his ex-wife. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He has a, um, you know, we liked him in the earlier interviews. I mean, he, like, he'd be fine. Like, we're looking at someone, as far as an interim, who'd be here for, like, you know, three to six months at most. So a blink of an eye for him, I think. Yeah. So he would, it, like, he would totally do the job. And do the job well, but so with this next guy, Ross. And he, he lives in Moultonboro. I mean, we never talked to him about how he would be located and what he would do for a living or how how he would commute. Oh, Carter. Yeah. No, he um. So in the earlier interviews, he you know expected that he would do like a lot of it remote, but he would want to come to Conway like one or two days a week. So he definitely, I mean, he made that clear in the earlier interviews that he intended to like be on site. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think, you know, like two hour drive or something. It's not, it's not bad. Uh -huh. um, so he addressed that. I mean, I don't know if it's, it's, it's so weird doing these interviews because like, like I work for the state. So when we interview, there's like, it, it's just completely different, like completely different. Like you can't just have a thought in the middle of a, you know, question like ask someone something like everything you everyone gets asked the exact same questions yes. in the exact same order. Yes. And you so it's you know, we, and we, we can't ask like, so why did you leave your last job? Or so like, 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 how are you going to do this? If you don't actually like, 
you know, like you live in Mississippi, how are you going to like take this job? Like, it's just, this is very different. <laughs> and is that mandated? I mean, what, what causes that rigidity? It's just, it's, it's, it's lawsuit, lawsuit, it's like, lawsuit aversion. Uh, yeah. It's, just, it's, it's just, working for the, for yeah. the state. Like it's, everything has to be like so equitable, like, you know, there's so many things that we are not allowed to address in an interview situation. There's so many things we're not allowed to do. Yeah, a lot of them are for a really good reason, though. A lot of them are for a really good reason. No, no, I, I agree. Yeah. No, they're they're, they're very good reason. But I mean, I just, I mean, I'm I'm on like two interview committees for my for my work right now, and um, and this is this is just so different. <laughs> It generally, you don't want to ask personal questions. Right. We're, I mean, we're not even like we're, to, we're like we're not even allowed to. We have to sign a thing that says we're not even going to Google this person. We're not going to look them up on LinkedIn. We're not going to mm. like. <laughs> we are going to approach this completely and totally blind. <laughs> so it, you yeah, you, know, you, you never you know, know, know what you might find. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, what would you call pop-up projects? He kept he referred a number of times to pop-up projects. Little things, little things. Just like little pop, thing, yeah. Yeah, little, you know, things pop up. Yeah, yeah, it, not things that are planned for long periods of time. But oh, we have an opportunity to do this. Let's do it. So um, I, I I didn't know that that you you got through all the questions, but um, yeah, I, I think it was I think it was fine. We just have a lot of time before Ross comes on at uh, seven fifteen. Oh okay. Oh oh. Uh, I thought we... we were heading for quarter of. Yeah, I thought too. No, everyone gets for a forty five minute interview. I did mention that at the beginning. And it's good to tell them there are nine questions, nine or ten, so that they can take you know four or five minutes for an answer for each one. Well, he seemed to be signing off. Yeah. More more than done. we were. <laughs> well, he was told forty five minutes, and he he took that very seriously. Yeah. The clock went to forty five minutes, and he wanted to go because uh, actually the good. clock only went to half an hour. We cut him off fifteen minutes early. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well. You're right. Oh, but the clock said 645. So I was looking at it and thinking that it was 45 minutes too. No, so, we started at six, but he started I, at 615. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, but it got the quarter of and he was saying, well, it was great meeting you. So, you know, I think even like if you, uh, you can just tell when like you're done, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I'd rather like have someone cut out after half an hour rather than just like hang on for it because i mean every single question on here was these were ones that we asked in the preliminary right. interview so i've heard everything you know that to say they know the drill <laughs> exactly so i'm so can we all take a break until 7 15 and jump back on or is there something I mean, I mean do we need to that'd be great i gotta go find something to well, wait i gotta find a converter to plug my computer in. i need a three two to three prong converter my computer is not plugged in well you can't find one i have so many i literally have like a <laughs> basket full of those so, so what if we got back so, on at about five after all right okay all right sounds good right. i'm just gonna stay on this so i don't know if tom's just uh, yeah I'm, I'm not gonna log off i'm just gonna turn off right. video yeah. and you know yeah, I got a gazillion kids running around in the background. Hey, Tom, are you still there? Yeah. So did everything get signed that we needed signed this week? Yes, thank you. Great. Sometimes when I come into the table and find all the pages and Hard to know if we if we get everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you, it's talked, great. you talked about some of it trying to get it done early on Tuesday, and I got there around noon or so on Tuesday, but it seemed okay. Yeah, Lori let Laura get sworn in, even though she didn't have an appointment for him. 
Uh huh. So yeah, I was afraid of that. Yeah, but it, it went. It, she let it happen, so it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I was finally just leaving when you were coming in. I think. Right, right. Was heading towards one o'clock, I think. Yeah. We need a charger back there for you to plug your car into. Sure. <laughs> Dalton has an electric car for me. <laughs> they do. And the charger, know, I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I asked about that, but I didn't I didn't get an answer as to where it was. But rub it in, Tom, why don't you? <laughs> Dalton has an electric car for me. I have a matchbox car for you. I don't but, uh, yeah. By the way, Phil Ross uh, has joined us early. So when, whenever Erica gets back, we can uh, we can start. That's great. That's I I tease you, but that's great that you're getting an electric car from Dalton. If they have two electric cars, I'll take one. I'm happy with mine, Phil. They work great. I thought about it because I, I just got this used Jeep Cherokee. It was in really good shape, and it was too good of a deal for me to pass up. But I almost, I, 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 was, I was looking. I was looking. Next time. <laughs> I think a lot of people a lot of people are saying that. We'll see what happens. But yeah. The state really needs people to say that. They need a massive conversion to electric cars to meet their goals. And if the federal government pays to put fifty thousand charging stations geographically equidistant in all throughout the United States, like is in the infrastructure plan then that's going to just kickstart that whole thing. I'm not sure they're going to put them where they need them. But most, a lot of people who are in the decision to decide where they should go haven't thought it through, I think. You, we, need them, we need them in places where people who, who don't own their home, you know, who don't have their own home can charge. They're, they're on the highway, you know, they're, Electrify America has put them on the highway. Tesla's put them on the highway. So that'll get by for all the trips. It's the everyday charging. You know, we need we need them in workplaces. People need to be able to drive to work and leave their car and park it and, and charge while they're at work. You, you need them in all the places you leave your car oh, for a couple hours. I'm, I'm, I'm paying real close attention to the electric pickup too, because those of us that use a pickup and always feel guilty about it, just so that we can tow that horse trailer that half dozen times a year when we need to, or when we want to this, I think about that a lot too. I think yeah. that's a uh, that's the next hurdle too. No, most people that drive pickups don't even have that excuse. Uh, <laughs> you know, you actually need a pickup. Where's Eric? Here she is. I'm back. Sorry, back. 
Hi, Erica. So, so Ross Perry is already here. He's here. Okay, he turned great. his video off and muted himself, but I suspect he Just will us, so. hear that we're back. I'm here. All right. Hi, Ross. Hi, we can hear you. Good. Hi, Ross. How's everybody this evening? As long Wonderful. as you can hear us, we're doing great. Good. Well, welcome to Conway. I had a nice visit and introduction to Conway yesterday. I don't know if you heard. What did you see? Well, town hall, town offices. Uh, Tom introduced me to Louise and to Ken, the police chief. But I got to see the grammar school, the new DPW buildings up there. Um, the Conway covered bridge. Seems <laughs> a, that's a must to see. And then the, I guess your existing DPW ambulance and fire garage is up the other way. And we peeked in the um, Field Memorial Library. That looks like that's gorgeous inside. Yeah. It is. How about the Conway I, Inn? I love the drive up 116. You know, that was just a great, great drive. So. That's a drive that the town really defends. <laughs> On a regular basis, uh, the utilities want to run poles up and put move all the wiring out of the hill and move them down to along the street, and 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 we defend that that uh, you know tree covered street and the, it gets shady in the summer. You drive up from the valley and the temperature drops twenty degrees. It's got the stream running along it, and. Brings a lot of motorcycles riding through Conway also. Well, I was hoping that if this works out, I can find a new place to bicycle. But after some of the hills yesterday, I may pass on the bicycle option. <laughs> well, do you like mountain biking, though? I do like mountain biking. Yeah, there's plenty of places to mountain bike in Conway and in the hill towns. <laughs> and it's an exciting ride down that hill. <laughs> well, are we ready to go? Mm-hmm. So, I'm so I, I think you know Erica from the previous, yeah, we met in the previous. And, and Tom. Uh, I'm Bob Armstrong, I'm chair. And then there's Phil Cantor is our third selectman. And uh, and we're here just to get to know you. Okay. Uh, so could, could you talk a little, uh, well, uh, l l let me, uh, this, uh, so, so I lived in Stowe from 1970 to 1980. Okay, and, uh, and then I moved out to Conway. I moved here in 83. So where, where in Stowe were you? I lived on Hudson Road, just a little bit south of Route 117. Okay. Uh, 62 Hudson Road, a little ranch house. I have no idea what's there now. Uh, All right. Well, I'm on uh, Gleasondale Road, right at the, the end of Circuit Drive, across from Wheeler Road. Yeah. Uh, while I was there, I bought a few sheep, and I became good friends with Skip Warren at the Pilot Grove Farm. I don't imagine Skip is still around, but no, Skip is definitely it, still around. Is he? Pilot Grove Farm is still around. They have lots of sheep. So I think they're boarding some cattle and, and a donkey. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful town. And and and, and pardon me, and indulge me, guys. One more one more thing I just wanted to talk about. So so one of the things we did out here in, in Franklin County was was we put together a 13 town aggregation based largely on uh, what sounds like your work at Surped. So we we took your Surped uh, um, model and wrote a bunch of specs and went out for bid and uh, hired Colonial to be our broker. And we've got an active uh, uh, aggregation now that started last May, just about a year ago, and that's success, great. I think the one we did in Serped, I think at the time was the largest in Massachusetts. We had twenty three communities. I think we ended up with one hundred sixty seven thousand households. And I was calculating just in the first winter, every all the ratepayers saved a collective fifteen million dollars. That's what it's all about. And it's one of the, I get excited about this because it's one of the few things that government can do for the people that actually save some money. 
We could decide to invest in schools or invest in highway projects, all things that might be necessary, but they end up costing money. The, the municipal aggregation actually saves taxpayers or residents money. Um, that was a lot of fun to pull that off. We were very nervous when we went out for bid because it was the beginning of the pandemic and Eversource had just come out for bid with, with, with by far their lowest electric price ever uh, because oil and natural gas prices were so low. And, uh, and we still managed to underbid them, uh, get a bid lower than them for our, for our you know, utility grade power. And then we got, got good prices for adding green and, and uh, uh, it, it, was, it was a project I worked on a lot. So I was really thrilled to see it, see that you were with SERPED and, and, uh, and we, we, we followed in your footsteps. Well, it, it gave me great opportunity to meet with a lot of towns and to work on a process that we couldn't dictate or legislate. We had to influence. And I think that's a big part of any job. It's certainly a big part of, of a town administrator is there's some people that work for you that theoretically should follow your directives, but there's a lot more people in town that <laughs> you have to influence. You can't tell them to do something. We don't have 100% of the people in Conway, but uh, but I think we're we're well over 90% of the people in Conway are, are in the aggregation, and uh, we had some people who objected because it's you know th that they automatically got opted into the aggregation and they felt that was un-American, and uh, so so now we get to pitch to them that now it's actually really their choice. So they didn't go in. That's okay. But right. now they can talk to their neighbors and they can decide to go in or not. But anyway, I don't mean to talk about the aggregation, but I was just thrilled to see it, something that you worked on. All right. Do you have questions for me? Sure, we do. Uh, do you want to just tell us a little bit about, about you know, yourself, what, what you like to do or, or your view towards town management? Well, you've got my resume, so I won't bore you with all that, but I think of municipal government especially is there to serve the residents, the taxpayers, the business owners, and obviously the voters. And so customer service from town hall is, is paramount. You know, I, the people in town hall have to realize that they're there to serve the public. And when that grumpy person comes in, they still got to be polite and smile. Um, I think you have to find ways to listen and to hear them. Maybe not agree with everybody, but certainly to hear them. So respecting and the voters, the residents, and providing customer service is paramount. I think integrity. It's important to be sure that what town hall does is correct, that we don't forget things, we don't overlook things, we don't find someone's either making mistakes or accidentally or even worse, willfully. So there needs to be a way to be sure town government is, is accurate. And I think as town administrator, we're responsible for being sure that everybody else is doing their jobs appropriately. It doesn't mean micromanaging and watching over their shoulders, but there needs to be some sort of checks and balances to be sure things are happening, happening appropriately. We've got to keep the trust of, of the residents, the trust of the voters. Thanks. So that's what I stand for in municipal government. I think it's a municipal government should make sure everything keeps working. You know, we don't have to change the world, but people expect town government to work. And, and it's a challenge to make town government still provide good service during the pandemic when the town hall is closed or when you've got people not, you know, people working from home. Um, but that's all part of what I think government stands for. And that's something that I was proud of in Sterling. We closed town halls, a lot of people did, but everybody worked from home. Everybody had access to records nothing got dropped or slipped during that time. And I think that's a, it's a credit to the quality of the staff. And I would assume that's what you've got in Conway. But if not, then maybe I can help coach them and, and, and get them to where they need to be. Bill, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, 
yeah, you, you know, just Conway just sort of has um, really well established department heads. Our fire chief is 42 years. Our police chief is 40 years. Our assessor is 20 something years. Tax collector treasurer is 20 years, maybe not quite. Um, so, you know, they're just, there's um, just experienced people that uh, have earned the trust of the community in all of the, in all of our key positions. Um, and so the, um, can you talk about what you think your role, what you think about, about the role of interim administrator and um, what your goals would be? I laugh because Erica asked me the same question um, at the preliminary. And, and my response to her was, as it is tonight, I was going to ask you what your goals for the interim are. But I would say, as a minimum, it's to keep the process going. And you've got something, a little event like an a, a annual town meeting coming up. Um, when I worked as town administrator, that was my life basically from January to May. In this case, it would be from April to June, but getting everything lined up for town meeting, having, anticipating people's objections and people's questions and having responses and answers. I think in the short, well, in the interim, getting ready for town meeting and pulling that off is, is task number one, two, and three. Um, after that, it's dealing with issues that come up, it's providing direction, it's providing decisions, it's keeping you three involved so that we're working together as a team so that if I'm doing something, you know what and why, and if there's any questions, we've had that discussion before it's done. So, you know, I think interim is, is, to, is to keep everything functioning and in this case because of the timing the, fo the focus is on town meeting we're we're fortunate Con Conway's sort of famous among its neighboring towns for having the highest proportion of its voters go to town meeting and for having the most pleasant town meeting in terms of the absence of f-bombs and the general absence of nastiness that is so prevalent so um well i and that's a credit probably to, to the leadership and, and the department heads in Conway. Um, if you've got reasonable proposals, reasonable warrant articles with good supporting data, and you've got answers to their questions, things go smoothly. When you start to fumble, I think of it as a feeding frenzy with sharks. Once you get a little bit of blood in the water, People start standing up at town meeting and raising all these objections because you've lost their their confidence. And coming in in April, I think the interim person is going to be very fortunate that your town meeting is now in June, not in May. Those extra four weeks will be crucial in helping get things organized. Um, I would anticipate meeting with the board multiple times on the topic, uh, meeting with the moderator, be sure we're all on the same page. And then we've got, you know, I, do they, does someone put together a motion book, a book with all the motions? Uh, Tom traditionally does that, yep. Yep. Well, that's what I had done and would anticipate doing. I mean, I, I saw a draft of the warrant, I think it's three pages. That looks like that's in, in pretty good shape. I understand that the board voted on the salary decision, so the budget should be firming up. Um, oh, my grandson just came in. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> this is where the printer resides, and this is where his drawing paper resides. Yeah. <laughs> um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about your sort of worst job experience and then your best job experience? As a town administrator, or, um, um, the, 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 the piece of it that always the most difficult is when someone, a department head comes to you and says, their admin is a superstar 
and deserves a 15% pay raise. That could be the case, but how do you differentiate from that person getting 15% and the next person saying, well, I've got a superstar too, or I'm a superstar, I want 15%. You can't just do that as a one-off because they all, everybody will know when that happens. And there has to be a process and a procedure for it. The way I dealt with that was saying, show me what this person does and how it is over and above the job description. Well, in one case, they came back with all of the answers and clearly this person was doing a higher job than they were um, started off with doing. In the second case, that department had never came back to me because they couldn't show where their, their, their admin was doing more than job description. Now, I don't have any problem assuming you need the work in rewriting a job description that may result in the next grade and therefore an increase. But you can't just do that on, you know, on a one-off. Um, the best part, there's a, you know, you've maybe seen the list of things that were accomplished when I was there. Um, some of those were because I told someone, hey, go off and do it, or some because I did it myself. I think pulling off last year's annual town meeting as a drive-in movie process where everybody stayed in their cars was a huge success. There was a thousand moving pieces in logistics to be ready for that. Um, but I didn't want people to feel disenfranchised and, and afraid to come to town meeting because they didn't like the social distancing arrangements. And, we were looking at having three auditoriums all networked together and everybody sitting six or more feet apart. And I had people still say, I don't care if I'm 12 feet apart. That's, I'm not going to sit in a room for three hours with other people. So the obvious answer is outside. But of all the things the town administrator can control, the weather's not one of them. So I didn't want to have a rain out. I figured. If we do it as drive-in movie style, everybody stays in their cars, you've already got the social distancing. You don't have to worry about light rain anyway. Heavy rain may be, be a different story. And we had backups for everything. We, had, we, we started with the um, electronic voting um, tabulators that, where every voter got a clicker when they came in. And that worked really, really well. That, probably saved us an hour's worth of, you know, counting hands or voices. And I think every town should use that even for indoor town meetings. Was, was that new for your, for just that drive, drive in town meeting or had you done clickers before? We had not done them before. The town had looked at them several years ago and didn't like it because of the cost. Last year, we were fortunate that under the CARES Act, all extra costs for our town meeting were refunded or reimbursed by the CARES Act. So that made a $10,000 purchase for these clickers a no-brainer. Uh, but it really works really nicely. You can rent them. Um, you can buy them. Um, the moderator gets to see you know, the tabulation as it's coming in, um, it avoids the mostly, well, we, we didn't have anybody ask for a recount because it's not a case of counting hands or listening to voices. And you can actually show the vote on a screen if you want to. Uh, we didn't have a, a screen at the airport, you know, for the town meeting, but if you're doing it inside, you can show it on a screen. A really good idea. I'm sorry, I have to interrupt. I, I had never thought of the clicker concept, um, but we spend half the time of town meeting watching two or three people walk around the room counting uh -huh. three by five index cards held aloft. A, a yes. And, and then they never reach the same count twice. So we watch them redo the count uh -huh. over again. And then, and then the moderator finally says, okay, that's close enough. You're within one or two of you, what you got last time. It's good. Um, well, and just, 
if, if there was interest, I could help you look into getting clickers for your town meeting in June. Um, it, it saves so much of all the stuff you talked about, of watching people count, and you tell people, no, keep your hands up, or no, you can put your hands down now, or <laughs> did, did you count the select board? Did you count yeah. the finance committee? All of that goes away. And the clickers just are set up so you can't use your texting thumbs and vote a hundred times. Counts fast at the off. So you can change the times, it doesn't matter. It's still your last vote. And we explained all of that, you know, as part of the town meeting process. Our community access television station does have the equipment to broadcast over the FM radio band, like a drive, drive through drive in theater. Well, that's we use actually it was our emergency management folks had an AM broadcaster. So we had a big sign that said, turn your radio to AM 1680. As a backup to that, because I felt, you know, you can't have a town meeting where you invite 200 or 300 of your closest friends and have it fail. So we had a PA system that would have done the broadcast if the AM radio hadn't worked. And we had provisions for hand counting with colored cards if, if the mm. clickers didn't work. And we had somebody, a couple people on golf carts taking the microphones around to cars when people want to speak. But we also had a central mic with a under a tent. If someone wanted to get out and stand in a mic, they could do that. So I think we covered all the systems and we had a backup. Because you can't have town meeting and all the people show up and then have a technical glitch. <laughs> Do you have another question, Phil? Yeah, I guess. Uh, no, I kind of answered. Oh, so do you have any um, any conditions you want? Any any uh, any any sort of Think needs that you would have before you would want to accept the appointment. Um, so duty, you know, duties, limits of authorities, sort of stuff like that. Um, I'd like to clarify all of those things. You know, I, I I work for the for the three of you, so you you set those boundaries. I guess if if we had that when we get to that point, have a discussion. If I thought something was inappropriate or unworkable or I would tell you but I don't want to be making decisions and certainly not as an interim that you don't support or at least two of you um, because you're there to set policies I'm I'm there hopefully to, to implement the day-to-day -day function to make sure it happens so contract might follow similar to what you'd have for a town administrator. I think maybe the long job description list of duties, you might narrow down to say, you know, don't worry about this, don't worry about that, but focus on these things. Um, I think town meeting pretty much answers the question of what the focus will be. How about you, Erica? Um, I, I, I mean, I met Ross earlier um, on our previous um, search committee meeting. I guess what I just want to say is that what I've, as the freshman member of Conway Select Board, what I've really appreciated and come to learn about the role of the town administrator is um, you know, that Tom is always like, like, I'll just email him a question and he's always available and he's very knowledgeable about like Massachusetts law and, you know, the role of the select board. And um, so I, I, I guess that's my question. Um, are you willing to kind of like be that like go-to person, you know, for either us as members of the select board or someone in town to, you know, I mean, 
so, if, if you know the answer to the question or not, like, I mean, because literally, like, I will email Tom and be like, hey, I have a question. And Tom is like, right there, like, I, I feel like he's kind of like a reference librarian, sort of. <laughs> I don't know that I can, Tom has been doing this longer than I have, so I don't know that I can fully step into his shoes. But yes, absolutely. If there's any question, any of you and the public or department heads should ask me. Don't have the answers. I usually can figure out where to get the answers. Um, if you've got if you've got some concept or an idea how to handle something, discussing it ahead of time, one on one, avoids the board looking like they're sort of don't know what they're doing because they're saying they're asking questions during the meeting. Ask me the questions before the meeting, and if you've got a really tough one, I really like to have the the questions ahead of time, so I'm not sitting there like a deer in the headlights trying to figure the answer out during the meeting. So other than late at night, you're free to call or email anytime with a question. And certainly if you're thinking, well, I'm thinking of voting this way, or I'd like to try to do this in town, what do you think? Um, I would like to be asked those questions. I'd like to be listened to. And as I said to Erica earlier, the vote is up to you folks. And if you vote, different from my recommendation, that's okay. I will hope, I will try to explain the pros and cons of, of choices. If, if I think you're voting something illegal or inappropriate, I will say so more firmly. I, I had sort of a code with the Sterling board that, that if, I, if I said, as your town administrator, I recommend this. That was sort of like saying, if you go the other way, you're going to get in trouble. But that's your choice. Hopefully, I can give you the pros and cons, and you'll you can make the you know an intelligent decision on what you want to do. Tom works very hard at keeping us from violating the open <laughs> meeting law, or you know all of those difficult situations. You know, it's hard as a select board member that we can't talk to each other or we have to be very careful if we ever talk to each other outside of a select board meeting. No, like yes. we literally can't. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're still allowed to have social interaction. <laughs> but so um, many of our decisions are based on long history of what's gone on in the past and, you know, the way we used to plow the roads or the way we used to, you know, whatever. And, uh, and it, it, it and, it's hard to talk about that just almost casually in a board meeting. And I think, you know, a lot of that too is just you know, like, like, like what you just said, Ross, about wanting not to look like an, well, I'm paraphrasing, wanting not to look like an idiot. Um, <laughs> but the, 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 and we go through this a lot because we're, we're real keen on the open meeting law, I think the three of us. And that's because we've seen neighboring towns mm -hmm. what, destru how destructive it can be when, residents believe that there's two or more select board members sort of making decisions about stuff by themselves in advance. And so we always try to just, you know, so we have to remind people that when it comes before us, when we talk about it for the first time, it's the first time. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> and, and so we end up saying things that, you know, um, often display our ignorance of the subject or of the various permutations that the subject will trigger and, and whatnot. And, um, and and inevitably, residents will get upset about, you know, how could you how could you guys be so dumb as to say something like that or blah, blah, blah. But like the learning process for select board members uh, uh, about things that are brought to their attention, unfortunately, happens right out in the open for everybody to see. And um, uh, and, and so there's a certain amount of taking it on the chin there about like not always appearing to be as, uh, you know, a, a, as uh, uh, competent and knowledgeable about all things that you would like to be. Um, well, I, I understand that and that always happens, but I would still encourage you, you know, to call me or, to, or email me individually when you see the agenda say, so how is this going to go? Or what are the issues behind this? Or I might be calling you saying, what are the issues behind this? But hopefully we've worked out some of that speaking off the cuff ahead of time 
So you've got some insight as to what the issues might be. Mm -hmm. And yes, you, what your meetings are usually on Monday, right? That's right. And when do the agendas come out? Thursday. Thursday. Okay, well, you've got Friday and the weekend to <laughs> go through questions. <laughs> One of the things that, you know, that, that Tom does is he, he manages a lot of our town committees. He, you know, he, 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 the, the, the chairs of those committees or the staff, you know, our treasurer and, and they work for Tom. I mean, they're, they're essentially, he is their manager. And, and I'm just wondering, is that, has that been your situation? And, and, you know, how do you handle confrontational issues or when you have disagreements with the staff? The, the staff that supports the boards has, has worked for me, but the boards and committees, especially the elected ones, are independent, which means I had, as Tom Nisra, I had no direct control, but those boards and committees and their actions, they, sh they, they are what the town is and they will shape the town's future. So a lot of it is working with the chairs or and being a, a, con, a consultant to all the members. And I would go to Board of Health and planning board meetings and conservation meetings because I thought in some cases they were doing things that were detrimental to the town. And some of them were going off and suing people without, in my mind, thinking through the end game. So I control that by saying no one has access to town council unless they've talked to the town administrator first. Sterling Conservation Commission sued a little old partially blind lady because she had a swing set that was, in their mind, on town land, conservation land. And they threatened her $300 a day if she didn't move it. Come on, that's not the type of thing you need to go to court with. You know, so getting involved is important but the selectman and the town administrator can't tell the planning board or other elected boards how to vote you can suggest and sometimes giving them the right perspective helping them with open meeting law and conflict of interest and, and sort of a due process i think coaching those and guiding them is something i have done a lot i spent um, six years on the Stowe Planning Board. So I understand that process. And in Sterling, we ended up, we had a couple members that were just obstructive, obstructive and close to harassing everybody. We got rid of them. My involvement was quietly encouraging people to go find some people with good sense to run for their positions. I can't actively campaign for somebody, but it doesn't mean I can't have a conversation with someone that, you know, I think we need some new people on the planning board. <laughs> I was able to get a grant that got some money to start the Sterling's master plan. Um, I noticed yours is from 2013. Sterling's was 62 years old, your master plan. So we got a consultant to start that. I worked with the select board and the finance committee and convince them of the merits of hiring a town planner. And this town planner is off doing complete streets. She's doing the, share, the, the shared streets. She helped set up um, sidewalk restaurants during COVID. I mean, these are things that, that a town administrator can help influence, maybe not control. And this is what I talked about earlier is there's an awful lot in the town that's not directly in the town administrator's control. You still have to find ways to do what you think is the right thing. And in Sterling, I was doing it with the support of the select board because I was talking to them and they were talking to me. Conway has two traditional meetings every year that, that are um, invaluable, I think. And I mean, I'm, Sure, you won't oppose them, but uh, well, one of them is be the, a week or two before our town meeting. We have a pre-town meeting, and it's so this is a meeting that doesn't have to follow Robert's rules of order, and we take the copy of our warrant and blow it up and we hang it on the wall, 
and everybody checks off the items they want to talk about. And then our town moderator or, or a volunteer, you know, counts off all the check marks and says, okay, the number one item is this one. And we talk about it. And to some extent, we talk about it as long as we want. And, uh, and you know, nobody can call the question or, or any of the things that kind of disrupt, you know, town meeting. And, uh, and a, a lot of, a, a lot of misperceptions as to what an issue is about get settled a week or two before town meeting and then the word spreads around town as to what that issue is really all about. Educating people for town meeting is key. It's difficult. It's a challenge. I've also had pre-town meetings with boards and department heads so that we know who's the moderator ends up the script is going to make the you know make the present how it's going to moderator understands the issue so he's he or she's not going to get blindsided when people come out of the woodwork and complain about something. Anything you can do ahead of time to prep for town meeting um, is worth the time. Yeah. The, another meeting that we have every year is we have a, a, a committee chairs meeting where we get all of the people and not just the chairs, but the key people in all of our committees to come together in a big room and talk about what's going on in their committee. And, uh, you, you know, in a, in a way, it's a, it's a meeting of all of the influential or all the wonderful volunteers of people who come to you know, who run our town. And it, it's a great opportunity for people to realize that, that that there's a lot of other people all pulling at harness together sort of to keep the town going. I think that's great. Uh, we started that in Sterling. We called it an all boards meeting and it was a chance to discuss each board's goals for the next physical year. And it was great because you'd find out that some of the goals were synergistic and overlapped and supported some of the others and some might be going off the left field it was a chance to at least discuss it so an all boards meeting all boards all committees is a, lot, a great way to get communication in general our select board is so it tries to be very supportive of all of our committees so that you know they do just so much of the key work for the town um, one thing I'm wondering is if you've ever had situations where you really disagreed with the select board. You sort of hinted at that a little bit, but you know, how do you go about getting us back online? And maybe not on a legal issue, but you know, where we're just doing policy that you don't agree with. I I can't think of an example of that in Sterling, but certainly. If the board is as long as you're not doing something illegal. You know, I'm going to try to explain the pros and cons of your choice, and the decision is yours. I, I don't, I don't feel I have to or should be controlling your vote. I mean, I'd love to have you each talk to me individually if you've got questions, so that we can work through stuff. When I was a selectman in Stowe, I, which I did for nine years, I'd go in and talk to the town administrator. And say, well, I think we ought to try this. And he listened to me and he basically explained why that concept didn't make any sense. But I was fortunate because I was doing that one on one offline. Where it's easy to admit you're wrong when you're one on one. It's difficult to admit when you've stood up in front of the, the full board and now on TV and, and made a position. So I think mutual sounding boards were I can run ideas by you individually and you can run ideas by me individually is a way to sort of flesh through things and, and maybe get through it. It might be a misunderstanding, but at the end of the day, if, if the board wants to vote a different way than the town administrator recommends, I guess if it happens every time, maybe that contract doesn't get renewed, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bill or Eric, you got something or? I'm good. I mean, I, I spent time with, um, yeah. with Ross on our previous interviews. So I, I'm Ross, am I, when I read through your, your resume, it looks like you've never been a, an interim TA. Correct. I'm just wondering what you think about that. You, it, is it, you think it's going to be difficult to just have a three month or four month or whatever it is stint and transition on to somebody else? It's going to be 
different. It's going to be a challenge. Going to a new town is going to be different. But personally, I don't want to work full time. But I don't want to work long term. You know, I retired because I wanted to cut my hours back. And I don't know if you've seen that I had proposed in Sterling that I would phase out by hiring an assistant town administrator and I would work three days a week at, you know, 60% pay and I would train the next person as a way to smooth over the transition. Finance committee and select board approved that the voters voted it down by 30 votes. Mm. So, so I don't, I'm looking forward to a chance to still be involved in, in municipal infrastructure and, and town government, but frankly, not to do it full time. And so interim for me is, is sort of the next phase of my life. And, you know, if I like it after this one, or maybe I'll do another one next year. If I don't like it, I won't. How do you see doing it? L living in Stowe, coming to Conway, it's not a terribly long drive. I, I know I used to do it once a week when I would have to drive back into Maynard. Well, I did it yesterday. Uh, one is I wanted to actually see the community. Um, and two, check out the drive. It was an hour and 32, 34 minutes. It's not bad. Um, I also stopped at the in South Deerfield and talked to the manager at the Red Roof Inn and negotiated a rate for multiple nights for multiple weeks. So I would start off commuting um, and then I think I would look at spending, you know, a couple nights in, in South Deerfield. Um, I'm hoping that this is not a five day a week, 40 hour a week job. It doesn't mean there wouldn't be a few long weeks as we're trying to get things ready at the you know, last minute for town meeting, but I'm looking for this to be less than 40 hours a week. And so well, our transition is going to be for what, the, how to, you know, transition away from the, whatever the pandemic rules. And, and, uh, and that's been basically to have one person in our town office uh, on a continuous basis, but that means that all the rest of the people are working from home. And, uh, you know, not they're working and they're available and they're keeping the town going, but they're not in the office. Well, and, and op opening up town hall again will be part of the transition. And hopefully by July, we can be talking about everybody being back to work and town hall open the way it was before. Yeah. What was the COVID situation in Sterling? Did, did, did they have a lot of cases? Um, not a lot. Um, Sterling was in the, in and out of being the red in the red you know zone a couple times. Um, but, you know, I saw this coming in January, and I worked with our IT group to have VPNs set up in February. We also implemented online electronic permitting so people could take out billing permits or board of health permits online. All of that was actually turned on a month before the pandemic shut down town hall. So that's part of where I said, you know, customer service is paramount. You gotta keep that going. You can't just say, well, sorry, you can't get a billing permit because the billing office is closed, no one's there. That stuff still has to go on. You can't come in and get your tax abatement because treasurer collectors, you know, or assessors aren't there. We have to keep functioning. So finding ways to keep town hall going. And hopefully in this case, it might be finding ways to open up town hall again. I mean, I noticed, you know, the glass partitions, you know, in, in front of some of the desks. So those can, those are things to be dealt with. What do you think, Phil? Do you have any questions for us? Well, we we talked about goals. You know, my goals versus the board's goals. Um, 
you have any specific things you want dealt with besides town meeting? Well, we have a number of projects going on. Some of them you looked at, you know, we're in the midst of trying to complete the garage that we started building. Uh, and that's going to, at the moment, we have a plan to do some of that work with our local tech school. And so Good. that's getting complicated. And with COVID, it got extra complicated. The carbon credit program that's underway, that's just carbon beginning, yeah. which, which is really interesting. Um, and we have several, we also have a big construction project going on at this school, at the grammar school with the playground and at the high school, the track. Um, what else? There's a couple other things that I, I would be interested in, in your take on, uh, you know, just a general, how we do things, a general assessment based on where, you know, other other ways of looking at things that we do and improving on our delivery of services and our efficient delivery of services. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I'm always uh, interested in um, uh, other opinions about the quality of the services that we get as a town, be it legal services um, or, or other services and ways to improve or get, you know, get better in that area. I've also, you know, the, the other thing, you know, we. We had talked about last year about starting up an evaluation process for the town administrator, which we don't really do in any kind of formal way. And I, I think that if, you know, we, we would have gotten into it next year with Tom, I think, but just, you know, this year has just been um, just a complete year. chaotic year into, with so much to deal with. But so that, that would be another thing that I'd be interested in establishing, um, you know, and, and that's so uh, things like that. Um, coming from Sterling and living in Stowe, there are about just under 8,000 residents, and I, I believe Conway is under 2,000. Right. Um, I think I've seen things done in, I'll say, bigger towns. I've certainly not been in the city, so I'm not going to try to impose the city way of doing things on Conway. But I might see things that have been done differently and, and make those comments to you. Um, such as the voting clickers. I mean, that's something that was done. And actually, I helped, besides getting it for Sterling, I helped Stowe set theirs up last year for their town meeting. Um, but those are things that I can bring to the table as well. You know, you might try this because it seems to work well in other communities. I have to caution myself that a community like Conway does not necessarily mean it gets, does everything the way an 8,000 resident community does in Stowe or Sterling. And, and <laughs> I mean, your town hall was so compact and concise and, and I mean, so different from any of the town halls I've been in. Um, I don't want to ch change the character of Conway. I will offer suggestions on how things might be better, but I, I have to caution myself that that what was done in a bigger community doesn't necessarily mean it's appropriate for Conway. I've got to look for Conway solutions, not Stowe or Sterling or the next town solutions. There's certainly many things that very small towns really struggle to maintain. You, you know, we still have our own town ambulance, and it's a you know, a labor of love among a small number of people who are dedicated to having an ambulance. And, and we're fortunate that we have an employer in town who hires many of the people that are both on the road crew or on the police department and his, their employers are EMTs. And when, when the ambulance gets called out, those guys know they can just go and do the ambulance call. And, but it's a struggle. We, you know, we, we have a limited number of EMTs and and uh, the towns around us have all dropped their ambulance and combined together into a multi-town ambulance service and we're we're trying to hold on to ours. Well, I think that's always been a challenge. Um, you know, I came from SERPED, Regional Planning Agency, so I am sort of predisposed to looking at regional solutions. I understand you get PERCOG provides um, your 
accountant and building department, building inspector. More and more. We, and we pretty much we, we pretty much are do everything uh, are in lot are with them for every service that they offer. Well, I think shared services and regional solutions make a lot of sense, especially for communities the size of Conway. When you when you don't have the the business to drive somebody full time or the ability to pay someone full time, shared services and regional services make a lot of sense. And that's what I'm saying. I would look for solutions that are appropriate for Conway, um, but I've seen how other towns do that, and that may help sort of keep the, the ideas flowing. And, and there's also, you know, I showed you the things that I had accomplished in, in Sterling, but that was three and a half years as a full-time person. We're talking, what, three months for the interim? Yeah. Um, I, frankly think I can get a lot done <laughs> that long. Sit together, sort of come up with your board's priorities from day one to, what are you talking, July time frame? Through July, you know, hopefully you'll be, you, you'll stay with us long enough that we'll overlap with our, perm, with our permanent TA and pass on what you've learned. I, I would like to do that. I'm all for smooth transitions. So, and I'm, I'm so I'm so impressed that you're still here talking to us, even though you visited your potential future workstation yesterday. So, uh, <laughs> he went to town hall. Went yeah. to town hall. You saw where it would be that you would be working, and you're still here talking to us. So, yeah. thank you. you. But but you know, I, I I have pictures of that building when it opened in the 1870s. And it was elegant and lovely, and it looked beautiful. So um, I still like to think of it like that. But uh, well, I mean, I could see things that might be done. I mean, I asked Tom as to you know, sort of who is your facilities manager for going around and fixing things. Um, all of the things that we can talk about. All those things cost money, which means we'll have to talk about it. It's a halftime position in our budget. We hope to pass yeah. in town meeting yeah. this year. <laughs> well, I, 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 don't, I mean, Phil, you lived in Conway for, I don't know, 15 years now. Bob, you've been here longer than I have, I'm sure. <laughs> I've been in Conway for, I don't know, 23 years now. So, I mean, I just, I think that, um, I don't know, there's something about Conway that's very special. <laughs> And the fact that, you know, that those of us who are on the board are people who've been here for like a very long time. Like, I feel like there's like, there's there's a dedication, there's a commitment to this town um, that I don't know, it's a special kind of town. I love, I love Conway. And <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was very impressed with it yesterday. Um, I just think it'll be a fun place to spend, you know, a couple months. In the summer. <laughs> It's a yeah. It's a <laughs> well. We're exceeding your forty-five minutes that you, that you promised that you would give us tonight. So we 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 don't want to exceed that too much. Well, I'd, I'd like to be able to just answer all your questions so that when you deliberate, at least you've you've seen as much of me as you can. <laughs> and your grandson. Yeah. Um, when do you plan to make a decision? Hopefully tonight. Imminently. Okay. Then I assume I'll hear one way or the other from Tom tomorrow or from one of you? Yes. Okay. Um, as I'm currently not working, so a start date could be relatively quick. That sounds great. Good to us. Like Monday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Well, thank you very much. I've enjoyed talking with you this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Tom Louise. They're there somewhere. Good night, Russ. All right, I'm going to take a, a two minute break. Okay. <laughs> All right, get back together in a couple minutes. First impression. One guy looked like Tom, one guy sounded like Tom.
Erica, so I'm sure you guys in your screening committee talked about these guys. Um, we did. And we like both of them. I, we like Ross. I mean, if we had to rank them, it would be that, yeah, In a way, that's what I'm asking, I guess. Yeah. And I think, is that a, uh, and Tom, you should, I mean, should jump right out and say, no, I'm not allowed to ask you that. I don't know, but. Um, I, well, I don't, like I said, like, I mean, all of my, like my, my previous search committee experience is like, if I'm on a preliminary committee, the rule is like, we just forward all of the finalists to the final committee like without any ranking. Yeah, but right, right. This is so completely different from any other search committee experience that I've been on, so. Well, yeah. um, I don't know whether to approach it, like who would I want to hire as our permanent town administrator if well, that's what we were looking for. But these are both candidates for the, like they, they, they both been very clear, they only want interim positions. Yeah, absolutely, but yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then there is one candidate for interim who's, or, well, he's he, like, there, there is a candidate who's interested in interim and permanent as well, but we're not interviewing them until yeah, yeah. next round. So no, no, I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy here. We have two candidates, they're good candidates. We could probably, yeah, I know. either of them would work out <laughs> and we get to choose, you know, one that we will, I guess, take to the next level of negotiation. Yeah, and I, I mean, so here, this is what I've heard from people in town. Um, and there's still a significant, I feel like there's a significant number of people who don't feel like we actually need a full-time, and we don't need a full-time town administrator or it doesn't need to be like an administrator, it could be like a town coordinator, whatever. Um, I, so I feel like hiring an interim position, you know, gives us that possibility of like exploring whether or not we you know, like, like what that full time, you know, permanent position looks like, basically. I yeah. think there's um, plenty of work for a town administrator. But well, no, I know. And that's the thing, too, is that like, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like I'm in no way uh, qualified to comment on how much work anyone's particular job actually involves, you know, I mean, but, um, but I do know that that's a sentiment in town yeah and that's my charge as an elected representative of the town <laughs> is to you know bring that to the table that um there are a lot of people who feel like like we don't like we don't need a full-time town administrator and i don't know whether that's the case or not because i just don't know but um i'm, I'm leaning in the direction of full-time full-time position <laughs> um but the 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 uh, I, I just with respect to these two gentlemen yeah um, I and I'm just I'm not on screen because I got a plate of food in front of me I'm just trying to take, <laughs> finish it up to, uh, but um, the the uh, um, I, I thought I thought Carter had this nice sort of I don't know well my my one of my current favorite words is avuncular a v u n yeah. which <laughs> means of or like an uncle and um, and, and Carter had that sort of, I don't know, he reminded me of like a Conway guy. He did. Um, but, uh, but it, I, I, I think, may, you know, they both have definite qualities that are good and useful. I think maybe, um, may, maybe Ross had per perhaps more to offer. Um, but um, but, you know, also just in terms of like, just if, if I'm, if I'm the new, uh, permanent position, who would I rather sit next to in a room for, for a month? Um, it would probably be Carter. He just, I don't know. He seems, oh, really? but, I don't, but I don't, I don't even know about that. My, you know, my thought was like, if I had, if I had someone who had to like, you know, help me, it, mine was the opposite. I'd rather like sit next to, um, Ross. And have him like help me through the transition to like full time, I, whatever permanent position. I especially think if we were hiring a, a full time ad administrator, I'd much rather hire Ross as the guy I could see as being Conway's town administrator. Uh, and and it, my only worry is that he hasn't been an interim town administrator. 
and 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 I think you know he's a smart enough guy to see the difference and know how to you know take take this on as a as an interim job and one and he's trying to figure out how to how to cut back his hours and on the way to retirement yeah so i mean that's part of it too i do, do are, are we looking at a, both, both of these fellows were just like i don't want to be full-time for you no, exactly. Yeah. Um, they, they, yeah. they, they want to so, do. This. They want to get in so, and get out. And yeah. I didn't. Re we didn't really drill down into exactly what that means, but we did hear from both of them that they sort of thought two to three days a week was about right. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not saying that I think we should try to talk one of these guys into being the full, the permanent. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, only that if I if I were to thinking of who who I think would I would want to be the permanent TA. Yeah. Um. Is this is this being recorded and like yeah, I mean I was being recorded. we're being recorded. This is so, a lot. So whatever we say is like going on the FCAT channel and like. Well, no, but it, okay, all right. It, it, <laughs> it is going to be on the FCAT channel in a couple days. So anything that we say about these guys is like public. Yes, it is. Public. It's a public okay. meeting. All right. I, I mean, they're I both. Yeah, you know, but, but also, we were fortunate. <laughs> we were fortunate to to attract two very well qualified cats. I know. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I feel like this, like this is not a bad problem to have. No. 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 We have two very qualified candidates. One is Phil said is very avuncular. Um, I I feel like um, Well, I, I guess my my preference is for Ross Perry, and I have um, like a reasons that I can give for that. But um, okay, so I, I mean, to some extent, is everybody ready to vote? I, I mean, or do we want to keep talking? I, I hear Erica. I hear you saying, "Well, I've kind of made up my mind," and Phil, I don't know if you've made up your mind, and and. And hopefully, you know, and as usual, I really love it when we all come to a consensus. But <laughs> I guess that's always nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I guess I want to say that I feel like there's still some room um, for discussion about what the position of town administrator looks like, whether it's a town coordinator, whether that person is full time, whether, you know, what that title is. Um, you know, I think Ross made it clear that he would be willing to work, you know, less than full time, but still fully be on board for the transition period, you know, working with Tom before he leaves. Um, it sounded like he had, I mean, you know, his, like he said over and over again, like you guys have to get through town meeting. And that's something that I feel like is <laughs> like he gets that. Um, um, so, I mean, cause we're really talking about like the next two to three months. Um, they see the 500 pages of bylaws that everybody has to wade through at this meeting. But it's, but it's not, <laughs> it's not that bad, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> um, we just have to make it so uh, they don't get the table. <laughs> um, uh, th this is Tom, uh, this is I Tom. Can't... And, and, and that, you know, that, that's something you can, you can um, talk with them about during your contract negotiations is, you know, for, for what period will they have this, this contract? And if you want to have that longer conversation, um, then, um, you know, you can, you can ask them if they want to be for a longer time. And then you can extend the period of time for the search for um, a permanent town administrator. Uh, I will say that having gone ahead and interviewed for the permanent um, you probably want to make a decision about that pretty quickly, though. Yeah. So I'll ask again, do you think we're ready to have a vote? I, or do you want to? You, 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 I mean, so far, I'm hearing you, Erica, say that you prefer Ross. Um, I would vote if, if we had to decide who to hire right now tonight, I would say Ross. And I would, too. Unless Carter, unless the uh, unless Carter could be obtained cheaper um, to the town, unless there unless there could be a considerable savings to the other for, for the other one, but we you can't really you, yeah you don't know that until you offer right. the job to both. <laughs> We're not yeah. doing that. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. No. All right. Yeah. I, um. I. It, let the, um. I would want to like get right on negotiating with them like yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah. Because, because uh, you know, if um, because if it and, and to be really clear, we haven't talked about dollar amounts or anything, but we should really have a ceiling that beyond which we will not go. And uh, uh you know. Well, and, well our and, ceiling is definitely Tom's salary. You, you know, regardless of. But, days but of we're not talking. Ever. But but we're talking about like a per week thing, right? We're talking about a, a dollar amount per week. Is that how I, this? I think you're talking about a, 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 a dollar amount per hour. So you would take my salary yeah. and, and, and divide it by the hours and figure out what that is. And then if you wanted them for half time, um, the highest you would go would be to double that, which would be about, um, I don't know, $70, $75 an hour, which is not a lot of money for an interim, but it would be enough to. I think it would be enough to uh, have them say yes, because they understand that that there isn't um, extra money appropriated for this. Um, if they were if they were very assertive, they could they could say, well, can you go to the finance committee and get some more out of the reserve fund? Um, but that you know, I don't think either one of them would do that. So, how many hours per week are we looking at then? I mean, but does that, I mean, does that really matter? I don't think I you mean, want them. <laughs> I mean, I, um, I assume I, that this I person is yeah. going to do the job no matter how many hours a week it takes. I mean, we're going to tell them like, this is what you get, you know, th this is the job, this is the salary, basically. And I would assume- If, like, if you want to, if you want a salary, then it you you have to base it on less than 20 hours a week or else we have to pay benefits tom do you know if either of the, both of these guys expect benefits or as retired do they not i do not know that that would be an item for the contract negotiation Who's going to do the contract negotiation? You will. Uh, we we could ask town council to be involved as well. I I, I don't think um, I don't think I should be involved in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mike's You know, I, I what I see happen is that interim superintendents, for example you know, work part-time, but they get paid more per hour than a full-time superintendent. Not, not in Frontier's case. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, but... Um, <clears throat> and the same thing with the business manager. The business manager was... Uh, uh, when we did the contract business manager for that one year what is that two years ago or whatever that was um a little bit less than the full-time person that we got but we got we got a lot less for our money so. yeah yeah but and, and if you're not comfortable doing it i've done i've done that a lot bob with all of our last superintendents and business managers i can do it if you're not comfortable doing it but you, you'll do just fine yeah. No. No. I'm just w right. wondering, you know, if there's if, if, if how it happens, uh, and I'm happy. I'm fine. We should do it. So, can I mean, can we just all agree that we would like to offer the position of interim to Ross Perry? I th I think we all said yes. So, and then so the next thing is to decide who negotiates this contract. Is that what we're waiting on? Or that yeah. we all that we negotiate this contract. Yeah, yeah. I, I think every everyone's in on it, but there, you have you pick a lead. Well, if you want to do it, Phil, I'm I'm happy to have you be the lead, and but I'd like this all to be there. <laughs> I'll be there. I feel like I have no skills. Like this is not a thing that should be delegated to me. 
you know, my but I, okay. you know, my hope is if we decide this is the guy, we figure out what it will take to to get the guy, and uh, and I don't know how much less than you, you know I'll say Tom's salary divided by you know th Tom's weekly salary divided by twenty or something or twenty five mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Um, I, I think that's what we no, should it would offer. be Tom, Tom's salary divided by 40 and then that number would be cut would half of that would be what the amount would be for 20 hours. So I Phil would be doing the negotiation because Phil's doing the math. No, well, I mean, it, otherwise you're giving them double Tom's salary. On a per hour basis? Yeah. I think we're going to have to give him more than Tom's salary on a per hour basis. Yeah, so do I. I don't think you'll get him for my my hourly. So, I mean, so can we just agree that like we want to offer him this position of interim town administrator and then the next step is So do we ask him what he wants? Well, you, you, you can make him an offer. What, what I'd advise is is maybe meeting at 4.30 on Monday, an executive session, and then bring him in at 5 o'clock. And you, you can talk about, um, you know, what you think you want to offer. And then, because that, that's going to be the main thing. You know, and, and then at 5 o'clock, he comes in and you say, you know, this this is what we'd like to offer you. I get, I, you know, I guess so. Um, I, I don't know why we we couldn't do that now. I mean, we know I mean, everything. Yeah, I, like, having well, him say if yes. the three of us, if the three of us meet, it has to be posted, open meeting seventy two hours in advance, whatever forty eight hours in this advance. This is an open meeting. Right. No, so we, we are right now, it. but we could post yeah. it Thursday and Tom's talking about doing it Monday. We'll oh, okay. Tomorrow. So we can actually. That, that, that. That's, that's why I'm talking about moving it to Monday instead of talking about it now is because you wanted this discussion to be an executive session. Okay. I guess so. But, but you could have it at four o'clock if you wanted. But what I'm thinking of is doing it before the regular select board meeting on Monday. Right. Right. That sounds fine. But we ought to also we ought to have a form of contract to sign as well. I mean, is it? It's up to us to come up with that, right? It's not. And I do have a template for that. I okay. do have a template for that. So that's something that we should circulate and work on and have ready to go before we talk to the him, right? You can send that to us. Sure, uh, but you can't talk amongst yourselves unless right. you're in executive session. Right. So again, right. Right. Uh, right. maybe right. meeting at four o'clock on Monday yeah. and having an hour before yeah. talking with him at five, talk with him and then break and Then either you make a deal or you don't by six. So, so at four that sound good? Would, would that be executive session at four to go over the contract? Yes. Okay. And then five, we would talk with him. Yeah. That sounds good. Um, Monday the 12th. Okay. All right. Yes. I can do that. And then um, so you should, you should call him. We should call him before them and before yep. then though. Yeah. Tom, Tom you're going to call him and oh, say, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We just told him that he would hear from us tomorrow or tonight or something. Next. <laughs> yeah. We wanted someone on Monday. <laughs> yeah, we do. Okay. Are we done? I think so. I think we're, we're done. Good. Great. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay, I'll see you at well. four o'clock on Monday.
All right. Motion. Uh, yeah. How about a motion to adjourn? I'm going to there make a go. motion to adjourn. Second. Yes. Second. Third. Aye. 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 Aye.